looking at the assets is important. Two assets that are often uh, mistitled almost 90% of the time is in life insurance policies. People don't look at who you put in a beneficiary. We've got a case going right now where the first wife of three wives is still a beneficiary of a decedent. And she's the one that's going to get the insurance policy because that's how it got set up. And, uh, and yet it's really needed by the third wife. And, and so look at your insurance policy. Who's the owner? Who's the beneficiary? Who's going to end up with that policy? You might have a trust that says who gets it, but if the beneficiary designation doesn't coordinate, it won't work. Same with retirement plans. Uh, we don't pay attention to who we want as beneficiaries in a retirement plan. I'm told all the time, oh, that's my wife. Well, maybe it is. Maybe they set it up before they got married and never changed it. Maybe they made their trust the beneficiary. We used to have our uh, clients trust the beneficiaries of retirement plans. But don't do that as much anymore because of the ability to let the kids leave the assets in the retirement plan and not take them out and, and take them out of the life expectancy of the child rather than all at once. Uh, but again, that's an, uh, an asset that's often overlooked as far as who we, who we put down as the beneficiary. If your estate is 3.5 million or less, there is no estate tax this year. The, the exemption went up in 09 from 2 million to 3.5 million. Where's it going from here? We believe Obama has agreed to leave it at 3.5, meaning they're gonna have to pass some legislation this year to freeze it. If they don't pass legislation, 2010 is a very good year to die if you have a high estate, because there's no, won't be any estate tax. <coughs> Uh, 2011 is not a good year to die if they don't change things because it goes back to a million dollars that you can pass tax through. So we're hoping that they'll do something this year and the likelihood they will, and we believe it will be 3.5 million. Meaning if you have a husband and wife, you can pass 7 million free of estate tax. Uh, if you've got a, a, a plan that uh, takes into account both the spouse's uh, ability to pass the assets on. For valuable assets, we tell almost every client, if you've accumulated a lot of investment assets, be it real estate, duplexes, apartment buildings, stocks, securities, cash, whatever, generally don't hold it in just your name. That makes it too big of a target, too easy for creditors to go after. And, and it gets valued at the highest weight an IRS can possibly value it. So most of our clients with investment assets will have those assets titled in a limited liability company or a family partnership. I tell clients, you know, what you don't want to accumulate is a lot of what I call naked assets, assets that are just in your name only. Try to set things up so that you don't personally own anything other than maybe an interest in a partnership that you and your wife own together that has your investment assets in it. That's a better way to protect things, and from an estate planning point of view, I can discount how I value assets. So if I can get to 3.5 million per person, and they're married, I get to 7 million. If I have them in partnerships, I might be able to get to 10 million, because I can discount on how I'm valuing things. At 10 million, that covers, you know, about 99% of everybody in America. And maybe it covers everybody in America, not, you know, in, in the great world. Uh, uh, for estates that are large, there is a lot of things you can do. And the good news, now that things are so low, is now's the time that we're spending an awful lot of effort with clients freezing values. If, if my client had, I'll take GE stock, uh, if client had uh, a, a lot of shares of GE and it's down around $7 or $6 a share or something, Now's the time to put it in a specialized kind of trust where we can freeze the value. And if it goes back up to $60 a share, which is what it was a few years ago, all that appreciation I can get out of my client's estate by running into an irrevocable trust. I can do the same with real estate. If my client is going to be able to hold the real estate and it's valued low, now's an incredibly good time to do planning because uh, there's lots of what we call freeze techniques where we can take an asset value at today's value and freeze it. So any appreciation is not in my estate anymore. It's in future uh, uh, estates. It may, not, it may not go into somebody's estate for a couple hundred years, and how I set the trust up and where I set it up. So for those of you who still have an estate, and it's gone down value, but you're hoping it's gonna come back up in value, you know, there's a lot of things you can do to protect it, particularly uh, uh, in today's uh, market. 
offshore trusts. You'll hear about offshore trusts. Nobody in their right mind uses offshore trusts for income tax planning. It's very hard to do that and make it work. Very expensive, and most of the time they aren't going to work and you just get yourself in trouble. Some clients use offshore trusts for, to protect assets before they get in trouble. Wait a minute. Yeah. I'm about that. Don't jump into offshore trust without uh, talking to your accountant and a couple different attorneys at different firms. Be very careful about them. Uh, most of the time, they're probably not worth getting into. They're very expensive to set up. In theory, they work. Uh, and we've done, I've done a bunch of them that uh, I tell clients, let's make that the absolute last thing that you do and only after you really beg me uh, because uh, you probably don't need to get into it. There's, People that will sell them to you, but it's like it's like the best investment. I had a guy trying to sell me an interest in gold mine recently in, in uh, Southern Nevada. I said, well, "What the, what's the risk?" And he said, "Oh, I've taken all the risk out of this investment." <laughs> well, that'd be the last one I'll invest in. That's the last I needed to hear. There's no risk in the investment. So watch title, keep a list, see how your assets are set up. Make sure your financial statements accurate and uh, be conservative in today's world.